welcome to Young Adults. I hope you guys enjoy this. Let's close our eyes. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I want to thank you, Lord Jesus, that we can just share in fellowship tonight, Lord. And I want to thank you, Father, that your word remains true, Father. And Lord Jesus, said to guide us and help us and let us grow, Lord Jesus. You, your word is the GPS for us here on earth, Father. Um, you say in John 1, verse 1 to 3, that um, in the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the word was with God. And Lord, therefore, we know that your word cannot be separated from you father and lord jesus i want to pray that we will heed to your promises lord to your word lord jesus to the life giving words that is written down in the bible father so that we can grow and get to know you more lord jesus and tonight father i want to pray that holy spirit will come and reveal heavenly things unto us and i want to pray this in jesus mighty name amen okay guys so tonight i'm talking about the topic of commitment Okay, I'm really excited about it. When I read it, I was like, Ooh. really, the topic, commitment, the word commitment. I was like, yes! And then, I'll read the verse, and then you can decide for yourself. I'll tell you later. Okay. So, I'm reading out of Luke 14, verse 25 to 26, and I'm first reading out of the Amplified Translation, and it says, Now, large crowds were going along with Jesus, and he turned and said to them, if anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters and even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Then it says in um, the message translation, one day when large crowds of uh, lots, sorry, my word of only like one day when large groups of people were walking along with him, Jesus turned and told them, Anyone who comes to me but refuses to let go of their father, mother, spouse, children, brothers, sisters, yes, even one's own self, can't be my disciple. Anyone who won't shoulder his own cross and follow behind me can't be my disciple. So, I'm getting to the verse now because I can see you guys looking at me like, what in the world is Jesus saying? <laughs> okay, I was thinking the exact same thing, but I'm not even getting to it. At this time of Jesus' ministry, multitudes of people were following him, like big crowds of people. And so, um, we don't really know why they were following Jesus. Because, um, you know, it's great because some would say maybe it's because he did so much miracles so they were like infatuated by how much miracles he did. Or um, maybe it's because he fed so many people that's why they were follow following him. Um, but we don't know because it was never established. Because remember back then the crowds of people that were following him didn't know he was the Messiah. Okay, because they were blinded by it. The Old Testament speaks of it. Um, and the English translation doesn't bring this whole concept out as much as the Greek language. And in the Greek language, this concept is in imperfect tense. Okay, so that is what brings everything together. It's saying that at that time, big groups of people were just following him and there was no reason given why. And that is why Jesus deliberately turned around and um, made a statement that I think a lot of people got quite offended about and didn't want to follow him anymore. Um, and guys, when I looked at the scripture, I'm like, Lord, you didn't mean that, right? It's like, really? Seriously, why do I have to be the person to read this thing tonight? But it's in the Bible for a reason. And like, like, you know, did you really use the word hate? I'm sure you didn't mean the word hate. And I'm like, hate? I don't understand God. Like, really? <laughs> Buzzing a bit. But Jesus used the strongest word possible to emphasize a point. And I want to ask you something tonight. Who is the 
person you have the closest relationship with? Um, is it your father or your mother or your sister or your brother? Or is it your spouse or your children? Who is the person that you have the closest relationship with? Like, if I can, if I can say the one that you love the most. Okay, we don't really like to think of it that way, but if you could choose one person who you love the most, who would it be? Ne? Just keep that in mind. Okay? If it was a person here on earth. And then <clears throat> I want to ask this question what if that person would um, do something? Like, for instance, if I, I have to put it, what if it was a, like maybe someone's wife? Okay, what if it was your wife or you guys are like college now so you don't have to worry about that. What if it was Ashley and he would tell me, um, now I'm divorcing you. What would I do then? Now it won't happen. I know that. Like, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> I know that it won't happen. But what would happen if, so, like, if, if someone was in a marriage or your mom or your dad or your dad tells your mom, okay, it's over now. What? Or... Your, your, your parent might pass away, your sister might pass away, your child might even pass away, or that person that you value the most would just pass away. What would happen then? What would you be left with? And who will stick with you then? You know? So, I want to ask the question, what is Jesus really saying here? And, it, and he's saying, Jesus is talking about the closest relationships that we will ever have. And he's asking for a commitment from you in the sense that you know, a commitment in which he is preeminent, distinguished, leading, and dominant. Because he wants, he wants to be the number one in your life. He wants to be the number one in your life. And he's going to compare the relationships you have on earth. The closest relationships you have here on earth with the relationship he has with you. Yo, this is what's Yo, he would compare the relationships that you have here on earth, the most important relationships on earth, with the one that you have with him. Okay? So. Who do you love more than your mom, your brother, your sister, your wife, your child, your best friend, your spouse, your boyfriend or your girlfriend? Who do you love more? Who do you love more than those people? I'm asking a question. Like seriously, we're not going to answer. Who do you love more than that? Is that I'm going to God? <laughs> but, but, thanks, thanks, Bridgeton. But I was waiting for that. But naturally, um, if you're speaking in the natural sense, um, no one. No. Mm. So no, it's not God because it's you. It's quite, it's 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 quite a revelation because I was reading this and I was like, "When you say we're going to the deep side, Lord, I didn't think it was thee." But it's the truth, eh? Because, let's be honest, you love yourself more than your closest relationships. If you really evaluate yourself. Because if we can look at, and I, I use marriages tonight as a, as a, for build, <laughs> example, I'm going to be English a bit me, because it is the truth. Why do you guys think there's so much divorces out there? Because at a point, the spouse decided, you know what? I love myself more because you don't do the things the way I like it. So, you go that way, I'll go this way. And, you know, and that is the sad part. Because in the end, people love themselves more. And we can see it even more in this age. Because it's such a self-focused culture. Oh, let's take a selfie. Oh, it's just me, me, me. Like... Self-love. I have nothing against self-love. I don't. But you're, because seriously, you don't have to disrespect yourself to love yourself on social media. <clears throat> Just said it. <laughs> <laughs> you can't kill me because 
on you. <laughs> uh, anyway, you're going to shoot me through the phone. Um, <laughs> and when Jesus uses the word hate in this scripture, he's using it as a metaphor and a symbolism and a comparison for really saying, my relationship with you is so important that I want to be above everything and all in your life. Um, that if you can't sacrifice a decision, if you had to choose between that person that you love the most and Jesus, who would you choose? Just asking a question. And for guys who are, are single, yeah, um, pick someone that would rather choose Jesus instead of you. Because it will help you in the long run way more than someone that would choose you above Jesus. Just like, just dropping it out there, you know. Uh, Jesus said that there's one relation, that Jesus said that, they, that, that you know, he, he wants to be that number one. He wants to be that relationship for you that is your number one. And he wants to be the number one in or over. He wants to be the num number one over your selfish life. So, it's going to take a little bit of sacrifice, okay? And he's not talking about a no-cost discipleship. Because let's be honest, it's all great and all awesome what we did talk about, and that is who Jesus is. But if you really want to be holy as he is holy, it is going to cost you something or everything. or everything that is <coughs> that is what it is getting to okay <laughs> but what is that quote out of the one book that you said um um we said that one pastor gave us uh, that missionary God will not die um the quote was the longest road is the 18 inches from your head to your heart It's deep. It's very deep. Um, he's a missionary that goes overseas. When he say costs you everything, he would go to places and he would he say like you have to know that if you get onto this plane, you might never come back. You might die the moment you get off the plane. You might even die in the air. That is the cost that some people pay for the gospel. That is people that are like completely sold out. And it's people today. Like we had we went to Spur at Soul Naked the one day and we had this conversation with this this amazing worm. <laughs> he is a pastor, but he's also a missionary. I can't just, yes. Christy van der Berg. I can do it because it's one of the two. But he's such an amazing work. And he just shares like he came with a mission. He, he came here and shared with um also, the missions and evangelism week once a year. We didn't know, obviously, COVID. Anyway, but um, he shared stuff, and we went to have a conversation with him over at Spur because we just felt God leading us in certain in a certain direction. We received a lot of word. Walter, Walter yes, there we go. Um, the um, amazing at one point, and he just shared stories with us, and it was like out of his heart, he was like casually just talking and. Things that he was saying was like, you're like, then you really believe there and you're like, am I really giving everything to Jesus? Because every time he, in it, he goes somewhere, like, he doesn't expect to come back. Because that's how sold out he is for God. Anyway, that's just amazing. So, God is saying in these verses, my relationship with you is so important. That I want to be above it all. Above your selfish desires. I want to be your number one. I want to be above your work. I want to be above your studies. I want to be above your relationships. <coughs> or the things that makes you move inside. I want to be um, above the things that make you feel good temporarily. I want to be above the things um, that you potentially think you'll be doing in the future. You know? I want, to buy, I want to be above your gift. I want to be above your calling. 
I want to be above the words that you speak. I want to be above your relationships, ultimately. And it's a no cost. He's not talking about a no cost discipleship, and he's talking about carrying the cross. The Bible says that, and, and I'm reading the last verse of um, the message. It says, anyone who won't show these and cross and follow behind me can't be my disciple. And God has called us to be his disciples. So you make your own decision whether you want to really be a disciple of Jesus or just a follower. There's a difference. Because remember, these people were followers. And he turned around and said it. And his disciples were like, okay, I already left everything, so I'm okay. <laughs> and the other people were like, you know what? Rather than that, and some turned away. And some people kept on following him, but they were just following him, and they weren't, they weren't his disciples. You make sure you get the age and the people around you and you're like, okay, that makes a lot of sense. And I want to share three stories with you guys tonight um, that sums this up about commitment. Because all in all, it boils down to this. When you give your heart to Jesus, you give your heart to Jesus. And you give your life to Jesus. And that is a commitment to be molded and shaped by him every single day. To say, no matter what the cost, Jesus, I will follow you. Because... We did a series called Blessed Life, and God is a giver. He gave His best for us. So why can't we just give our best for Him? And it's not just about money. It really is about everything. Uh, Giving your best in everything, in every decision that you are making, to consulting God in every single decision. Like, Lord, should I take this road or that road? Like, seriously, guys. I'll take. I'll, I'll tell you guys now about the road team, but I just want to start with this, this first story. And um, when immediately when I read this stuff and like God just spoke to me about commitment, um, one of my friends came to mind, um, and I know her since high school. Um, but she's older than I am. She's actually friends of my dad, but she's also she's kind of connected to me as well. And um, she, when I met her the first time, she was my dad's neighbor, and she was just so full of fire for God, she still is. And she, stru- she was trusting God for her alpha male, her husband, and she's like already in her 30s by then. And um, I just remember talking to her about trusting God for this man, trusting God for this man, and then she got that man. And they were married for four years, they adopted a little girl, and um, oh, it's just an amazing story. And four years in, um, they are in ministry, they are fired up for God, he cycles a lot and he's cycling here in Cape Town because they are um, cycling for um, practicing to do the, I think it's the August or the, yeah, you know, something like that. I was almost getting confused with all these marathons and kutters. And he was practicing for that with a, with a friend. Um, and he, he was riding from Somerset West around Woodlow Railroad, coming down and then would go back again. And um, a drunk guy hit him. And he died on the spot. And um, I I saw it on Facebook because she wasn't my dad's neighbor back then anymore. Um, they were obviously after she got married, they moved to the place, but they're still in some of the best. But I was friends with her on Facebook, and I saw it, and my heart just absolutely broke for her. And I was like, Oh my word! What do you tell someone like that? Because I know how she was trusting for it, for this person. Um, way before she even met him, like probably three years before she even met him. So I know the journey and, you know, and I was like, Lord, I, like my heart just broke. And I couldn't imagine what she was feeling. I get to know her from my mouth today. <laughs> Guys, when we got married, we were probably living there for like a month or two. Guess who moved next door to our place? She did. And I was like, oh, wow. And we saw her and... Um, I wave and like hi. So obviously the first thing that comes to mind is what do you say? <laughs> and she was so friendly. She was full of life and she was just talking and she wasn't looked like she was mourning at all. And I'm like, I don't understand this. This is not like I don't understand. This is just it does not make sense to me. And then eventually, the one day after, we were probably neighbors for like a year and a half. Um, we got more acquainted, we went to their own church. Um, she's still in ministry. Still, tr- And the amazing thing was, she was still trusting God. She's still in ministry. She's still serving. She's still like, 
and she's open and honest and she would out of the blue some some day someone had, she would just talk about him and about what happened and it wouldn't look like she's sad and I'm like sitting there like <laughs> in my mind I probably really look like the woman that Trevor Noah speaks about in the traffic car pulls over and like <laughs> I just I, I, I don't know. Yeah. So the one day I gathered up all the courage and asked her, I'm like I'm sorry, I need to ask you this how? Like how I, you, I have never seen someone mourn in such a way that you were mourning. And she's like, you know what, when, I'm not, let's just, I don't want to use their names, because um, I haven't asked her permission, but she wouldn't mind, I just, I just want to be con concrete. I, I said to her, so, how, what, how could you, like, I asked her the question, like, how can't you, I, I'm sorry, how can you not be in a deep depression? <laughs> like, yeah. I'm sorry because I know how much I love my husband. Praise God, I'm praying for the opinion of Jesus. I mean, nothing's going to happen to you. But I'm just like, I cannot put myself in the shoes. I just, I cannot. I rock my nor my mouth. I begin to my Like, seriously. I, I can't even, I can't. And she's like, you know, before we got married, we decided that the first person <laughs> in our marriage is Jesus. And she's like, we are not loving each our our love for each other is not dependent on each one how much love that one shows the other. She's like, we decided that Jesus is our number one love, and because Jesus was our number one, um, really our number one, I knew that He was just linked to me. I cannot, my flesh is like, mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> no, that is next level. And she's like, obviously I was sad, and it, and it comes in waves. And she did more. Some days she would tell us, like, oh, I feel so like I can't even throw it off. We, 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 we went to Majosi, we, we watched the concert of Majosi the one day. And I remember clearly driving, and she was like saying that, I don't ever think I'll take my wedding ring off. Or did she say she took a wedding ring off for the first time? I can't remember. It was something like that. It was, yes, we were driving, and she's like, So, guys, I decided to finally take my wedding ring off. And I'm like, This is such an awkward conversation. That's before I asked her that question. And I'm just like, I don't know what to say. I'm just going to listen. You know, God just wants me to listen. <laughs> and I'm like, this is how I don't understand. And she would just randomly share things like that. And I would be like, okay. And when she said that they both decided for themselves that Jesus, they're going to love Jesus more than they love each other. She said when she went to view the body, she just, she just felt so much peace. And she was like, she said she breathed. She cried and she kissed him on his head and she said bye. And she said she left there with a peace that she cannot explain. And that made the morning better. And she said a while after, I'm not going to cry, um, a while after, um, a doctor phoned her. And he said he's the doctor that stopped next to the road. We saw the accident happening and he, he stopped and her husband was still alive and he helped him with his last breath or something and he said he just wants to let her know that um he died in a peaceful way like it didn't look like he had any pain and she was like and that she said was just so much um, confirmation to her but for me her co their commitment to each other wasn't necessarily just to each other it was more to god than to each other because the closer you move to God, the closer you move to one another. And I'm, I'm saying it for you guys for future references. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking, chest and shame. I won't pressure you in that. <laughs> She's not joking, you serious? <laughs> <laughs> you are. Um, so, I don't know if you want to say something extra about that story, about, about that. Um, I just think their maturity in Christ was... Mm -hmm. Was, yeah, it was deep. Mm. Uh, a commitment in Christ was like was really, really deep. Like, and that was such an um, example to me because I was like, I kind of like, you know, <laughs> okay, 
she said the one thing that she said that stuck out with her, she didn't put her husband on a pedestal. She didn't make him her everything. She didn't give everything she had to her husband because she gave everything she had to Jesus. And everything flowed from, flowed from that. And I was like, teaching moment. I'm taking it all in. Thank you, Jesus. Help me, Lord. <laughs> um, and then the second thing I want to share out of my personal life. Um, I was sitting when I was preparing this, and this is the three things that the Lord showed me. Um, that is from the very deep side, so I'm just taking you out into the shallow waters again. Uh, <laughs> is that when I was in high school, when I was growing up, um, up until my matric year, um, I had life rough from age nine to literally my matric year. That nine years of my life was absolutely really not, not so nice. <laughs> but I'm looking back at it not with um, anger or like despair because I know that God um, is going to turn whatever the enemy meant to steal from me for his good. And I know that every single thing that happened to me, God is just going to turn around um, and use me to help others if, if he's not already doing it. But I clearly remember, especially when I was going through my hardest time, it's often that I probably did, I, I had three su suicide attempts and um, I, just, I just gave my heart to Jesus and I was still struggling very much with a lot of, a lot of hurt, a lot of pain, a lot of stuff that was happening. And um, yeah, guys, I remember clearly that when I experienced Jesus, that it was a time in my life where I couldn't share everything with everyone. Um, I couldn't, I, I didn't have that relationship at the time with my parents where I felt comfortable sharing with them what was going on inside and our relationship was of that nature where um, we couldn't, like Pakistan, there was a lot of hurt, there was a lot of confusion, there was a lot of stuff going on and because of that I just did not trust anyone and there was a limit to where I could share things with my friends because yes I did share things with people but all they really did was listen which I am thankful for, but I needed affirmation. I needed love. I needed just something that would carry me through. And when I met Jesus, he gave me that. So I would clearly remember getting up in the mornings and I couldn't wait to spend time with God. And then we'd come home from school crying because what I went through during the day was just so bad that like, I didn't know how to handle it. And I just really didn't want to live anymore. And then I was like, no, but okay, I had this experience with Jesus. He needs to be more. And I would go into my room and just cry my eyes out, journal everything out. Everything that I was feeling, I would write in a letter to God and just spend time with Jesus. Crying myself to sleep at night, praying, like just trying to read the word, coming to church, like completely just like trying to volunteer, serve everywhere that I can so that I can get closer to Jesus. In every aspect. And um, because it turned out that Jesus was the only one I had for a very long time. A truly someone that really knew what was going on in my life. And, and when I mean that, I didn't mean that he was there. He was there with me. And I could, even though I couldn't see him um, or sometimes couldn't hear his voice so clearly, I could just feel his presence and that was enough. And when I read this, when and when I prepared this, when it says here, what happens when everyone else leaves you? What happens when everything you know, everyone you love, is not there anymore? Who will then be there for you? And that's Jesus. And if we can put that person rather first than everyone else, our life would look a lot different. And I'm talking about that because somewhere along the line, God healed me and I started like, I lost that dependence on him a little bit for a while. And I was like, Lord, I'm so sorry. Because that is where everything that my zeal, my passion, my heart for you comes from, that's where it was birthed, in my hurt. And in my space of whatever vulnerability I, I was feeling. So, Jesus is the only one that will be left after everyone has left, left the building. Jesus is the person that sits with you after everyone has left the party. Have you ever been at a function that you hosted or what was your party and everyone else has left 
and then you have to sit and clean up the mess. Yeah, yeah. Paper plates. That's the key. There's not almost paper plates, Jamie. It's got a line on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So it's that Jesus, is that person. Um, and yeah, that is that is the one thing I wanted to share. And then the other thing is actually it happened something something happened in the week, and I was like, really do I need to share this? This is so embarrassing. I was like really, you know, I like to be vulnerable and oh, no the comments are taking a giant work of all the extra I don't know. But um, <laughs> um, I was at CrossFit on Monday and I didn't get up early, that early on Monday morning because I was very tired from, from the weekend. So I went to CrossFit at 4 o'clock the afternoon. And while I was busy in my workout, I clearly heard the voice of the Holy Spirit. And I was busy with the workout and I was like, I'm going, pushing for it. I'm like, yeah, and I'm pumping myself out because I want to give my best. Because the best, what you put in, you will get out. So you can't complain that exercise is not working if you didn't really run when you should have run. Mm-hmm. Okay, anyway, so I was like, okay, cool. Pushing myself, running, not checking how much calories I'm burning, what stage of the workout I'm on, my fancy watch that my husband blessed me with. Then I'm like, oh, I took a shoulder. And in the midst of that, I had the voice of the Holy Spirit. Like, why are you committing more time to CrossFit and exercise than you're committing to me? I'm like, oh. and I was like, I felt so, but it wasn't like in a, harsh voice or in a con mm-hmm. like in such a voice that you would feel your the other song when I'm with the <coughs> But it was like your Okay Lord and I remember I was so taken aback by it. I was so demotivated. I was just I was just standing there and I wanted to walk out. Cause I was like I need to go spend time with God because there's nothing wrong with CrossFit. Mm-hmm. But where's your priorities? And I was like, because I've been sharing with my, the youth leadership that um, we started um, a course with Pastor Jerry called Blessed Life. And um, he said, the first night he talked about first fruits. Giving the best of your first to Jesus every single time, with your time, with your money, with everything else. And I was like, cool, I knew that God was telling me, Shay, and so I was spending time with me at the end of your day, spend time with me in the first thing of your day. I'm like, okay, cool, Lord. And it's just about the time I saw it. I'm like, let me just start getting up earlier. Like, let me get on it. Thank you for the grace. And then I'll get up more earlier than that. And it went on and on and I never got up earlier for Jesus. And so Monday happened and I was standing there and I was like, your Lord, that was nice. I just, I just, you know, I wanted to just leave. And then I thought, yeah, I was like, no, we are going to mention them because it's fucking money. <laughs> so seriously. And I was like, ooh, how do you explain that to people <laughs> that's in the world? And I was like, okay. And I was just so taken back by it. And I said to Ashley, no, I'm not doing that anymore. I'm giving my first to Jesus. So I've been doing that. And I made that commitment. And I'm saying it here so that I can be held accountable because... Um, Jesus, like Jesus is my everything, but if I spend more time doing other stuff, then it's just words and not actions. So, Tuesday morning I got up at five and I didn't go to CrossFit and I spent time with God. And this morning I got up at four because I went to a 5 30 class and it was amazing. I did my big take for them up to go, but I got up, I set my alarm like five to four. So if I snooze it for five minutes, I, I think it's already five minutes past four, and then I'm like, oh, wake up. And I spent time with God, and it was such an amazing time. And it was so funny, I walked into CrossFit, and everyone was standing there like yawning, because they probably just got out of bed. I'm like, hi, guys, how are you doing? Why are you so quiet? And it was like, oh, shut And I was just thinking, like, yo, why didn't I do this in? And I felt so good. Um, and I made a commitment, and I'm like, I'm going to stick to it, because Jesus is more important than exercise. Jesus is more important than getting my daughter's school clothes ready for school. Jesus is more important than, um, you know, being late for work. And I say it with all due respect, I thank God that I'm working at a church. <laughs> because 
Um, the other day, I was running in, I messaged Tony Louise, and I said, I'm just quickly getting something because it's supposed to be Derek's birthday, I want to get him a gift. And so I went into the building shop, and the lady was standing there, and um, we were just, you know me, I just ramble and talk a lot. And then, um, all of a sudden, like I mentioned, I don't know how it got to that point, but now I'm, I'm, I'm past it. She just opens up and she starts sharing about things that's going on in her life. And I got the opportunity to pray for her and invite her to church. And uh, God just really ministered. And I got that opportunity and I was like two hours late for work. But doing God's things is more important. And to get to that point means that you need to commit to something. That means that you need to put your selfish desires away. There's a verse in the Bible in Matthew, I think it's 6 verse 14, I'm not sure. It says, seek first the kingdom of God and all righteousness. Why remember we spoke about righteousness by grace? Mm. Right, you know, and that stuff. <laughs> and all righteousness, if you seek God's kingdom, His righteousness, then everything else will be added unto you. And, um, I just wanted to share that with you guys tonight. Um, commitment is, is very important. And um, commitment to Jesus should be our number one priority. We can't just say we do something and then we don't. And as we grow closer to Christ, those things will become more evident. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to share that with you guys. And I will send last week's questions on the group. And also this week's questions on the group. Um, someone just needs to send the WhatsApp tomorrow morning, not now, because I won't do it now. Um, and then I'll post it. Commitment Okay, fine, I'll do it tonight. You want to put it out in it. Okay, let's close our eyes. Heavenly Father, Lord, tonight we want to come, Lord Jesus, and we want to thank you for your grace and your mercy, Lord. I want to pray, Father, that we will just come to you, Lord Jesus, and Father, that we will just truly commit 100% every single part of our being unto you, Father. And Lord Jesus, I want to thank you that you are faithful and that you are good. And Father, I want to thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are an amazing God who just wants the best for us. Lord Jesus, you gave everything for us. You sacrificed everything for us, Father, so that we can have the best relationship that there ever is. And Father, I want to just pray, Father, tonight that we will truly experience a revelation from you to what areas in our lives we need to make a more serious commitment, Father. We need, we need to put you first, Lord Jesus. Whether it's in our work, whether it's in our studies, whether it is in our relationships, Father, that we will truly put you first in every decision. And Father, I want to thank you that you are giving us the wisdom and the revelation. Forgive us for the times where we have chosen things above you. Father, forgive us where we have not placed you first in the things that you have called us to do. Father, forgive us and help us, Lord Jesus, and give us wisdom and guidance to choose you first in everything, Lord. And I want to thank you, Father, for the boldness and the courage that's raising up in every young person tonight. I want to praise your name forever in Jesus' mighty name. Yeah. Mm -hmm.